Okay, I see by my watch that it is one o'clock. Call to order the board of directors special meeting. Um, could I have a roll call, please? Director Sewell. Here. Director Grasha. Here. Director Duncan. Here. Vice President Wright. Here. President Martin. Here. Thank you, we have quorum. Okay. Do we have any members of the public that want to address the board today? We do, President Martin. Ashley Metzger from DWA is here to address the board. Okay. Go ahead, Ashley, you have three minutes. Thank you, President Martin and members of the MSWD board and team. I wanted to share with you that we were so glad to work with Mission Springs and others collaboratively on the water shortage contingency plans. And we really look forward to a joint outreach effort through CV Water Counts so that we can have a cohesive, consistent message on restrictions this time around. During the last drought, um, we had some difficulties with different restrictions for different days of the week, different times of day. So we really worked hard to come together um, to benefit our community with consistency. Um, we also appreciated that we could team with your staff to submit comments um, to the State Water Resources Control Board when they were considering these emergency regulations. Um, we felt it was really valuable for our community to show a united front on these issues. And just wanted to let you know that you are the, if, if uh, you didn't already, that you will be the first uh, of the agencies from the Coachella Valley Urban Water Management Plan Coalition, the first of our six agencies to approve the formally the level two of your water shortage contingency plan. So kudos to you on that. Thank you. Do you have any other members of the public that wish to address, address the board? Uh, no further public comment, President Martin. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to item four, an action item, resolution 2022-16, implementing level two of the Mission Springs Water District water shortage contingency plan. It is recommended to adopt resolution 2022-16, implementing the water reduction actions outlined in district's water shortage contingency plan. General Manager uh, Wall. Okay, I'll, I think between Ashley and then what Marion's going to say, I'm going to turn it over to Marion. I think we had quite an introduction here. As you know, we are in a drought and um, there's been sort of a quick turnaround on the, uh, the, the direction and orders from the governor. And it's going to require that we have something in place by June 10th. So we thought we needed to put it on this meeting agenda in order to get action done by the 10th of June. Sure. So with that, Marion, do you wanna take it from there? Yes, thank you, uh, General Manager Wallum. And good afternoon, <laughs> President Martin and members of the board. I'm here today to ask for your approval to move us into stage two of our water shortage contingency plan. As 2021 drew to a close, rain and so snow plummeted California, raising the, state's ongo uh, raising the hopes that the state's ongoing drought would be alleviated, but water fortunes have changed uh, in Jan since January and historically low precipitation has followed. Now as summer approaches, it's clear that those few months of reprieve did little to shore up the state's water reserves. On May 24th, the State Water Resources Control Board adopted a state, a set of emergency rules requiring urban water suppliers to implement the demand restriction, reduction actions identified in their water shortage contingency plans for a stage two of water shortage. This was in response to Governor Newsom's March executive order, which I shared with you last month that called on the state to conserve water as we head into the third year of drought. Is my, are my slides moving? Can you see that? There we go. Specifically, the State Water Board called on urban suppliers to submit preliminary supply demand assessments to the Department of Water Resources prior to June 1st, 2022, as you may recall, the annual assessment is intended to meet the requirements of Water Code Section 10632-1, and that includes an assessment of the likelihood of a water shortage occurring during the next 12 months. We have completed our assessment, assessment and we have submitted it to DWR. The State Board, order, the State Board also ordered and banned the irrigation of non-functional turf in commercial, industrial, and institutional sectors. This is limited to areas that are purely ornamental and do not serve a purpose. We have very little, if no areas in our service area that fall under this category. 
And lastly, the regulations require urban water suppliers to implement the demand restrictions, reduction actions identified in the supplier's water shortage contingency plan adopted uh, for a shortage level of 10 to 20% equal to level two. Working with the six urban water agencies in the Valley under our urban water management plan, MSWD adopted its current water shortage contingency plan in June, 2021. A copy of that plan is posted on our website under our urban water management area and is also available in your packets. Each agency has its own set of actions. However, the measures, just as Ashley mentioned a few moments ago, in each of the six agencies plans are very similar. And this was intentional to help us avoid some of the customer confusion that happened during the last drought. Under the plan, the following are our shortage level two demand reduction actions. None of these are very major changes, but they will have some impact. The first action is the one that's getting the most attention, and that is the limiting of outdoor spray irrigation during daylight hours. Of course, this would, there would be exceptions made for leak checks or for maintenance issues. Restaurants will also be required to serve water by request only. I have already reached out to several restaurants in our area to let them know that this could potentially be coming and have offered table tents and extra information to help them uh, communicate to their customers. Another action is encouraging contractors to use non-potable water for construction purposes. While we don't offer a lot of options for this currently in our service territory, this is something that we may be able to do in the future when the new regional plan comes online. If the drought continues and the state opens up funding opportunities, we'll be well positioned to, to include this in our offerings. Moving on, um, those with turf will be discouraged to overseed this fall. This is with the idea that once you overseed, you typically use more water to get the new grass started. And one of the larger initiatives in stage two includes an expanded public information campaign. Individually, we are already expanding our outreach and leveraging our social media accounts. We will also adding some of the state's Save Our Water materials and working with our CD Water Count partners to develop a new targeted local campaign. We have a meeting later today where we will start to see some of the design ideas. Stage two also calls for increased water waste patrols. I have spoken with our customer service team and we have a system in place already, which uses door hangers to notify and track customers. We are in the process of building on this and we will be expanding our outreach and communications with our field staff and our customers and making sure that we document this process to show how we are actively working and communicating with customers to fix issues as we come across them. And lastly, the reduction of hydrate, hydrant dead end line flushing. I have checked with our management team and some flushing will still be required. However, generally we will be able to minimize this whenever possible. Adopting the stage two action does not change our current stage one act activities that are in place. And that includes things like not hosing down driveways and sidewalks, using a shutoff nozzle when washing a car and avoiding runoff in the street when you're using your irrigation system. A copy of the state water board regulation, our draft resolution and our water shorter contingency plan are all included in your packet. Please let me know if you have any additional questions. Okay. Any questions from the board? Nancy? Ready? Ivan? Yeah, I just had one on the 2.6 um, shall increase water waste patrols. Do we currently do water waste patrols? We oh, go ahead. Go on, Marion. Go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go oh, on, Marion. Thank you. That's a great question, Director Soul. Uh, our field staff are have already been trained when they're out in um, daily operations to make sure that they're looking for water waste. Um, what we will be doing is we'll be revisiting that with the with them and making sure that they are on the lookout for it. Uh, primarily, what we want to do is make sure that we're documenting this process. It's been a little bit informal in the past, so now we're going to give it a little bit more structure. And then um, if there is someone that's uh, abusing it, will they be given a warning or how does that enforcement happen? Yes, um, yes. It, it does start with a warning. And what we've done in the past is we will put a door hanger uh, at, the, at the residence or at the business. And then um, our customer service team has been very good lately with following up with phone calls. So we've had very good success with quickly getting some of the stuff remedied um, just by doing that, that extra touch. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We, you know, we just, we, we just ramp it up. We should also mention that even though we're in stage two, we're also implementing stage one. It's sort of a progressive thing. 
Director Grasha, do you have any questions or comments? Uh, well, just, yeah, I have a comment, I think. Uh, on the um, uh, turf part of this for, I, you know, I can only think of one place and I don't think they have any real the golf courses are not included in that, I don't think. Is that right? Uh, where condominiums are forced to uh, stop uh, watering uh, turf that's what, not recreational? It, can, I, do you, can, can anyone think of where that might affect us within the boundaries of our district? I, I can't think of a single piece of turf that's just not useful. And I'll, you know, I know, I know they went over that. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? They went over this with, with the, over this at uh, Desert Water at one of their, I think their conservation committee meeting. And I can see where they'll have a problem, but I, I don't see where this is going to be an issue at all for us, really. Director Rasha, I have identified one area where we do have some trees and turf, but the key is that there are trees uh, planted in that turf, and they are on the same. Um, irrigation system. Right. So if if you are going to turn off the water to the turf and it's going to do damage to a tree, then they would be exempt from that. Right. Right. That, that I I'm not sure this is going to have any effect on our community other than they won't we won't be able to get water at our with our breakfast. Can't, Unless you ask, you have right. to ask for it. Right. So, uh, but I'm I'm happy to, uh, to support this and make the motion to approve it. But I, I don't think you would allow me to jump to step three. But I would do that too if I thought it would uh, if it was something we could do. But I guess we can't until it's called for. So, I would make a motion to approve the uh, staff recommendation. Okay. We have a motion. Does uh, do we have a second? Second. Uh, Director Sewell is a uh, second. Uh, can we have a roll call vote, Dory? Director Sewell. Yes. Director Grasha. Yes. Director Duncan. No. Vice President Wright. Aye. And President Martin. Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Okay. <laughs> okay, moving on to item five, fiscal year 2022-2023 budget presentation and discussion of the draft, draft general manager's recommendation, recommended fiscal year 2022-2023 budget. General Manager Wallen. Thank you. Um, I wanna begin uh, before Arturo makes his presentation by stating that um, the district has never been in a better shape financially. And we have been working for years to get to this point and thankfully we are prepared. Um, everyone must realize that budgets are designed, you know, not only just to show the revenues and expenses, but also to distribute the cost to past, present and future customers. It's a complicated process that, that, is, that, that is moving. Uh, Arturo has spent his first year uh, as a finance director making very good changes that will better characterize our expenses, and you'll see that today. Some of the presentation is a little different than you've, you've seen before. Um, you will see that we've looked into the future so that we can know what we need to do to be prepared. Um, and you must also realize that, you know, we have grown substantially, um, I think. Uh, we have Arturo can correct me, but we're close to 14,000 accounts right now. Right. Uh, the numbers uh, this year also are going to seem larger because finally we are at the point where we we're going to start doing what we've been saving to do and preparing to do for years. But to fully understand this budget, one has to go back in time when we first started talking about the need for additional sanitary sewer service and and capacity, and, and that's when the regional plant came up. And you've had several presentations. The regional plant, the largest project the district has ever constructed, truly defines the budget and the policies and planning, which, is, which have occurred over the past decades, to fund this project are all becoming reality right now. Um, and we're proud to share this in our 22-23 budget. Um, 
eight years ago, we prepared a financial study, and you remember that, and went on for a year and a half where we included the, the community uh, in a number of meetings. Uh, it offered a plan to fund the regional plant, and today we will present a balanced budget, updated capital improvement program, and funding scenarios that will uh, that is allowing us to be proactive to proactively work with the state for what we hope will be a fully grant funded regional plant. We don't know yet. It's going to be largely funded and we don't know how much, but that will fund not only the plant, but the conveyance line, the septic to sewer project, which will bring 685 uh, properties online. And potentially this could be as much as a $68 million grant. Um, the budget takes into account the drought conditions and the state and county are current uh, that we are currently experiencing. As such, we've made a very conservative revenue projection. Uh, these conservative projections provide sufficient revenue to cover our daily operational expenses and substantial capital improvement program. So our Turles presentation today also includes details of cash flow over the next two years. Um, and it will, this will serve as the foundation for covering the regional plant's construction costs. We don't know what the burn rate is going to be. Well, we do. We have an estimate, but we're prepared to, to handle that. So as we wait for the state's funding agreement and fund our new critical services and administration building, we are confident that we have things in place. And uh, right now I'm going to turn this over to Arturo, which will give you um, a very good presentation on the budget this year. Uh, thank you, General Manager Wallum, uh, President uh, Martin, and uh, the rest of the board. I am glad to be here to present the uh, 2023 uh, budget as a draft from the General Manager. Um, don't forget that this is a workshop. If you do have any questions, please stop me. I will do my best to answer them. We have Brian and uh, Assistant General Manager Brian uh, Macy and also General Manager Wallum who can help with any of the questions you may have. Um, it is a back and forth. This is not uh, presented for you to vote on today. Uh, we will bring it back with any changes that the general manager makes at the uh, study session and for your vote finally at the uh, board meeting uh, later this month. Uh, quickly, just the process of the budget, uh, the staff began to uh, work on this in March, although I have to tell you, it was pretty lengthy and we might want to start this earlier next year just because of all the information that uh, we cleaned up and are wanting to present to the board, but also a lot more that we want to do for the following year. Uh, the next step is uh, right now the presentation for the, uh, the general manager's draft. The next will be at the study session and finally uh, for the final adoption at the board meeting. Uh, the key assumptions, I'm not going to read through all of this, it's pretty basically the, what the general manager um, mentioned earlier uh, with minimal increases to operating revenues. Uh, this is just a, a rough uh, review. I'll go into more detail later on. Um, in terms of the uh, other key revenue assumptions, as you know, uh, we went through our last rate increase uh, last year and there's uh, now no planned increase in this uh, budget. For expenses, we do have, we are requesting one new position in the wastewater uh, department. As you know, the waste, the regional plant is coming along um, and we're going to need that staff trained and ready to go when to, once that plant opens. Not only that, but most of their salaries in the next year because they're gonna be tied to the plant should be capitalized and covered by the grant. Just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, we're also uh, requesting the implementation of the classification and compensation study. And one uh, of the employee requests, uh, most of them were actually reviewing and able to do in-house. Uh, there was one that we are requesting the board uh, for approval and that was certification pay. Uh, and finally, as you can see, just from your own budget and from your own expenses, uh, everything is costing more these days. And that is reflected in the budget, although um, staff did decrease those expenses expected for next year in, um, in anticipation for those increases as well. Overall uh, revenue budget, we have uh, $20.7 million in operating revenues. 
uh, which represents a 1.7 million increase over la uh, last year. And uh, the highlights of that is other operating income uh, in the liquid accounts. That's a 470,000 increase over last year. As you know, December 31st was a shutoff moratorium uh, where it ended. Uh, we have uh, now started charging customers again with delinquent charges, uh, disconnects and reconnect fees, and that is reflected in the, in the budget um, when it was not in the prior year. Uh, sewer service uh, fee is uh, scheduled at 7.3 million with 195,000 increase. And all of these are based on last year's uh, new connections to our sewer uh, system. And the same with uh, meter connections and service charges, you can see that we're scheduled at 2.9 million with 85,000 increase. Now, keep in mind that even though consumption should increase because of those new connections, we did consider the conservation that was just brought up, uh, up earlier uh, by Marion and Ashley uh, to a tune of a net increase in water consumption of 45,000. Obviously, you would expect that to be much higher because of the new connections um, and meter uh, charges, uh, but because of the drought, we have to roll it back the 10% that is uh, recommended. Any questions so far? Now, going on to uh, operating expenses. Uh, before depreciation, we have operating expenses at $18.8 million, representing a $1.6 million increase over last year. Uh, of that, salaries and benefits represent $8.4 million, and the increases in this year are $820,000, with $600,000 being the implementation of the classification and compensation study. The new position that we're requesting are $200,000. Again, most of that will be covered through that grant. Uh, and the one employee request of the certification pay, which only um, amounts to 30,000 over, uh, overall. Other expenses of $10.4 million represents a 775,000 increase with a majority of that being electric utility. As you can see also from your own bill, electric utility is going up uh, overall. Uh, overall, all expenses also 241,000 increase, which is not significant considering that we're back open to the public and we're back to uh, basically back to normal uh, when it comes to uh, operations. Uh, and finally, uh, there's fees that are required uh, when we go out for new loans, which will be discussed in the next uh, two screens. Uh, and finally, non-operating um, budget summary. The uh, non-operating revenue is scheduled at $28 million. That's an $18 million increase over last year. Uh, with that, property taxes are uh, 2 point, uh, million with 582,000 increase. Back up in front footage fees, 844,000 with 327,000 increase. Uh, the, ma the major item here is those grants for the regional plan, septic to sewer conversion grants, and Skyborn of $25 million. Um, and finally, investment income and interest expense of 37,000. Um, and that's a rep. Again, over last year, last year we budgeted a decrease, uh, a loss, just simply because of the market, uh, which now brings us back up almost 200,000 uh, with the current market conditions. Any questions that I can ask? Yeah, I just wanna emphasize something before we go any further. Should we not, uh, if the circumstances are such that we don't get the amount in grants that we're anticipating, um, we'll be able to make that difference up in tax revenue and low interest loans, correct? Correct, and actually, let me jump ahead now that you brought up, that's a good question. Um, in what we have uh, currently, as you know from the presentations that I've been making every month, uh, cash as of April is sitting at $46 million. Um, that is what the board has set up as reserves, specifically um, to the regional plan in the new uh, um, uh, building. And looking at cash, strictly cash, we can see the thick red line going up is the cost associated with the regional plant. The, uh, the uh, lines going down are represent the reserves and cash that we have on hand. And also with CalTrust, the short-term, medium-term, and long-term um, investments that uh, if we were to use cash strictly, you can see where we basically start going down and almost running out uh, in uh, 2023, uh, the fiscal year in June. That is not the plan. Obviously, we are still expecting those uh, grants to come in. However, the contingency is that the way we can, we're gonna work with this is with loans. 
Um, right now, we do have an ability to go out and get lines of credit, which means we only use it when we need it, as opposed to borrowing $20 million, having it most of it sit in the bank until we use it uh, and paying interest on that. We would only pay interest when we need it, uh, which brings you to the last uh, cash uh, graph in here, showing that because we are going after those loans and after that line of credit, if we were running out of uh, funds in December of 2022, we're pushing that out. Uh, to uh, March of 2023 uh, with those loans. And again, considering those funds coming in for those grants, uh, by that time we'll have made uh, other decisions that we have to considering those monies that might not be coming in, but by then we'll have an answer for sure. Okay. We expect to have an answer this summer, hopefully. But okay. An answer to, to what question? whether we're gonna get the 68 million or a portion of that grant request. But we, they're, they're requesting the 68 million. But we did get 16, right? Well, yes. Correct, and that is reflected in the budget. That okay. is part of the $25 million. So with the 16, uh, we run out of cash in, a, in, in about a year but you're expecting and hope, uh, and, but we're going to borrow money to, to, to get that plant completed. We're not really running out of money. We're just, uh, we've got options available to us for financing. Is that what I, I, I'm, I'm hearing? Exactly. That is exactly what we uh, what right. we're saying. Okay. President, Thank you. Martin, President Martin, can I add a couple of things? Sure. Arturo, can you go back to that slide that shows the forced funding scenarios? Director Grasha, the, the issue that we're having right now the next two slides, is that we have not signed the grant agreement because we don't know if it's going to consist of all grant or a combination grant and loan. So what, we, what we're showing here today is not even getting the grant, the $16 million grant, because that agreement hasn't been signed. And the two dates that you see there, whether it be December 22 and May 22, the difference in the bold lettering there is that we're trying to, if we rent, we're gonna run out of money in December, 2022, we wanna go out for public financing, possibly in May of six months outside of that. So what you see is when we think we'd run out of money and then when we would actually have to go starting down the process of going out to, for bonding. By adding the two, or two different scenarios of letter of credit. Each of those bolder lines, the blue and then the purple are actually each $5 million lines of credit. That pushes our deadline to go out and start looking at alternate financing in July or August. Now, we still have yet another tool, if you will, that's not on this slide. And that is that the state through SRF also can provide us with some type of gap loan, as they call it, that typically have, excuse me, bridge. a bridge, excuse me, a bridge, a, a bridge that they can actually go through their same program. But again, we don't have that funding agreement to even start. So we're looking internally at stuff that we can control. And that's what we're showing and presenting today that we have enough cash. If we don't, then we're gonna find lines of credit. And I believe Arturo is looking to bring that back next month to start going down that path and securing those lines of credit so we can continue to operate, maintain our, comp, maintain our bills and the burn rate that you see in red there and still keep everything where we want to. If we were to go out <clears throat> and actually start drawing down some of the medium term um, investments that we have, I think when you see some of the budgets, you always say, if we matured today, we would take a loss. Right now, those midterms, if we were to convert all of that, and I forget exactly how much that is, but it's several million dollars, we would actually take a $400,000 loss. So the short-term financing that he brought up in the very beginning, about $184,000, is actually cheaper than the $400,000 loss we would have by converting those medium term into cash. So we're trying to look at several different scenarios, all positioning us in a position that if the state continues not to move forward with our grant agreement, we can still have enough cash, short-term investments that are liquid, as well as the line of credit to make sure that all the bills are continuing to be paid. Our has done a fantastic job with all of this and putting it together. Yeah, and I, I, I want to say, um, I, want to, I want to compliment also, uh, Arturo and Steve Ledbetter have been working with the state for the bridge financing if we need it. So that's sort of a safe haven for us. We've covered ourselves and backed ourselves up. And so we're very comfortable moving forward with this. 
Uh, thank you, Assistant General Manager uh, Macy. Uh, that number is the medium fund of uh, $21.2 million that would definitely cost us roughly 400,000 uh, to liquidate and bring in, uh, transfer back to the uh, Wells Fargo operating cash account, as opposed to uh, roughly 200,000 that is estimated in the cost uh, for those loans in the next uh, few months. Any other questions? That was a great question, by the way. Well, um, I think that uh, we should uh, consider uh, as part of the process going forward uh, to have a budget update on this subject at every board meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. And Absolutely. That's a good idea. Yeah. And the trigger here is that, uh, that grant. Uh, information uh, that we need in order to continue to go this uh, route or make changes in the next couple of months for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So in a big picture summary, here's the operating revenues compared to last year, operating expenses before depreciation, net operating income and loss, um, all income in the last two years. Then we uh, in include the depreciation expense, and finally the non-operating revenues and expenses of $28 million. Um, as you know, we're not just gonna collect up $28 million in grants and keep it in the bank. Um, the next screen is basically the, uh, the detail of the previous slide. I won't go into any of these unless there is any questions specific uh, that you want uh, to go over. Uh, we can go over that at this time, otherwise I, I will skip this slide. So going into the operating budget, as you know, we have to comply with the water uh, code and the water code requires that we present uh, information a certain way when we're presenting the budget. Uh, overall operating revenues have to be shown combined and operating expenses have to be shown as a departmental budget as opposed to salaries, uh, outside services, electricity and so forth. So that's what this represents. Um, and again, that's the, this is the 20 million in revenue over the $22 million in operating expenses, which includes that $4 million in depreciation. And this is more meaningful to the board at this point, uh, simply because it shows that again, that grant uh, revenue, I'm highlighting it in green so that you can uh, see it um, of coming in during the year, which is basically the net, uh, most of that net income for the year of $26 million. In addition to that $26 million, we're going to uh, be looking overall in $33.8 million in uh, loan proceeds uh, to cover those capital improvements of right now sitting at $87 million. That The majority of that, again, is those the, uh, the regional plant in association with also the uh, administrative building. And we'll go over those in, in detail in the next slide. Is there any questions I can answer on this? Slide. Um, how did you get the 25 million estimate? Is that just conservative of what we're hoping for? That is what we know uh, for sure that we're gonna get over the next uh, few uh, months. Uh, part of that is the $60 million from the regional plant, uh, about $6 million coming in for areas H and I sewer to septic conversion uh, in a few other areas. And finally, the uh, what is considered local grants for Skyboard of that, uh, the conveyance line and, and the additions that we have to uh, to do for those projects. And then if the grant does come in higher, it would just lower that loan proceeds? Exactly. That is exactly what you what you were referring to. And when we come back, that's the update that we will be giving. Well, forward. as we work our way through this, we, you know, part, like I mentioned at the very beginning, running a utility it is really a, a past, present, and future. And that's how you basically distribute the cost is to you know you have those that, that paid it in the past you have those that, that are presently there and they need to pay and they have those that are in the future so we sort of allocate those costs to those those three groups essentially point point of clarification if i could when we we're talking about the skyborne development uh it's on the it's in the line item grants but actually if you recall 
part of the last amendment, there was an escrow amount that they placed so we could go back and rehabilitate one of the wells, equip another in the inner tie. That escrow is what you're, that's the four and a half million or 4.7 million that you see in that grant column. So it's a 16 million H and I, and then the development escrow, the Skyboard development escrow, but it goes under grant because it's a low, the way it comes into our system and based on the auditing and things of that nature, right. accounting codes. Okay. And, and also keep in mind the, the loan proceeds will uh, go down should that grant uh, be higher. Uh, but keep in mind that over the last four years, we have postponed several other larger projects uh, that uh, because of the economy and for obvious reasons that we have not gotten back to that we were, uh, were planning to in the next uh, two years, uh, simply because it is also needed. And you'll see those in the next uh, couple of slides. So something different from what you've seen last in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, before, everything that we had open as a capital improvement was presented to you, even though there was really nothing moving uh, around in those uh, projects. I decided to uh, clean it up and only present what we're expecting to spend the next year, uh, which is a little bit more meaningful to you when you're looking at some of these ex expenses and what it means for the district. Um, the items that fell off are pretty minor, we were about $3 million. So when we're looking at the majority of the expenses, this is it. Uh, so you're looking right at our, uh, uh, pretty much what we're doing and the operations of the district are, of what we need to build uh, to move forward. And the majority of those expenditures and to fund in 2022, 2023 um, are on that last line, uh, K, column K, um, the, starting with well 42 at $2.1 million. That uh, project is mid completion, it is still underway. Um, but keep in mind that also from there, we did receive in the current year about $1 million in grants, which is reflected in this year's um, actual grant revenue. I got a question on this page. Uh, line item 18, Chrome 6 compliance study. Last year, 200,000, this year is zero in the budget but final capital and continuing appropriations, what does that mean? That is the current job uh, amount that we have scheduled for that project. And that's a very good question because- We don't have any Chrome 6 guidelines, no decisions have been made. Are you just carrying that number forward? Correct. Do you have something yes. in there? All right. All right, thank you. Yeah, we don't have any further information that, of what the requirements are for the district at this point. Therefore, we cannot come up with a true number they have put together a draft MCL, which right. we then added, a, we pre presented the state with a comment letter, but if it does stay at 10, whenever they announce it, we wanna be prepared to start moving some of those forward and start analyzing the data that we have so we can be a little bit proactive. We do expect after the MCL comes out and it gets published in the, in the register, we will have a two-year compliance window. So your, the answer to your question was a short one, yes, but we've put it back on back up front, if you will, in the capital budget, because we know it's more than likely going to come in at 10 and we need to be ready to respond. And you need something there for a placeholder. I understand that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, for obvious reasons, the majority of the funding in 2022-2023 is the regional plant and the new administrative uh, building um, down below. Um, any questions on this page? Uh, I don't know if it's on this page, but there yeah, an item 31, admin building. Yes. Um, one of your, uh, one of our friends uh, said that it would never reach 30 million. And I see it's blown past that by 30 million. Is that right? The, the estimated now at 33 million 300, we started out at six and a half million. And, and, and you're still keeping it on the. Director Grasha, you are correct uh, with this, with a lot of the increases in inflation and where we are right now. Yes, it has gone uh, considerably higher. However, we're working with the architect to reduce that as well as look at our entire CAP program, knowing where we are from a cash management perspective to possibly push some of these project into later years. But you are correct. Uh, the latest report we got from our architect has uh, added to the project considerably. Uh, we are actually asking him 
to come and talk about the, the status updates of the project at our study session uh, on the 16th. Thank you. And finally, uh, as it relates to capital improvements, uh, the last page basically summarizes um, comparing last year to this year, what we projected in uh, funding for capital improvements. Last year, we uh, budgeted uh, actual improvements of $33.5 million, of which uh, $7 million was gonna be for grants and loans of $12 million. Uh, there was no need to go after those loans because of the postponement of those projects. However, the uh, district debts did spend uh, $4.9 million on those projects. Um, and in 2023, you see that 87,180 uh, million dollars compared to the 25,000, uh, 25 million, excuse me, in grants. Uh, the loan proceeds, th these two numbers are exactly the same number as in the previous page uh, for a total expected outflow of $28 million. Um, and this again corresponds with those uh, slides in the cash projections over the next two years. Um, and in the bottom, it basically breaks it down by the departments, uh, the general fund, the water fund, and the sewer uh, fund, where the majority is basically going to that regional plant. Is, is, I see you've got the terrace reservoirs on here. Uh, although we were never, I was never allowed to have an engineering subcommittee meeting on the subject. I, I, I understand that these numbers might be a little... Um, soft i would say have, have have any decisions been made on what uh up, might upgrades might happen there or are we gonna uh wait for better uh financial conditions before we make any decisions on that my, my understanding that that that's, those three numbers should equal about 10 million Actually, when we bid the project, I believe it was a year ago, the total cost came in at five billion, or excuse okay. me, five billion, five million dollars. But we were we were expecting about three point six. So to answer your question, at the latter, we were act, we're actually looking for a better environment. We hope we we don't hope what happens with the economy, but we're guessing that there's going to be a little bit of a slowdown, and there may be an opportunity uh, in the fall or early spring to build those projects. That's why it remains on this CIP, and it's why it's not fully funded. The five million that we received uh, bids for a year and a half ago. And and it, uh, most of that is, I don't want to understate the importance of it, but a lot of what what's is new new uh, rules meeting meeting new state rules uh, but in your view there's no unsafe condition there is what I I, I haven't inspected them myself so and, you know and I'm no real engineer uh, to, so, well to paraphrase to paraphrase what's going on there just for the boards uh, information those were built before the north ridge earthquake and i think it was 1991 since then because of that seismic event they put a uh, building code added a bunch of seismic requirements on L or on storage tanks such as our three reservoirs there so because of that when we're doing the rehab we were going to actually solve or make them compliant to the current building code which meant adding rings and making it a little bit taller so when the sloshing went back and forth it wouldn't hit the roof and actually pivot it right off its foundation things of that nature and that's why those prices came in so expensive because that cost was more it was more than what we were being estimated so you're absolutely right director there have been changes in the building code since they were first constructed and we're going to bring them up to code with this rehabilitation and you combine those is it, and what we're saying is you got two two things at play here one is the building codes the standards are changing requiring more uh, expense the other thing is is just inflation i mean our original estimate for the regional plant was what, 20, 27 million, million, I believe. <laughs> and it's 43 million. Yeah. You know, uh, something we, none of us expected. Correct. And uh, when we have those numbers updated again, we'll come back to the board uh, with an update, uh, which gives us a better picture of where we are with those numbers. Thank you. Uh, finally, in terms of the uh, another item that was pulled from what compared to previous years is uh, vehicles and large mobile equipment. 
Um, this, uh, these are the vehicles that the uh, staff needs uh, to purchase, not to be, uh, what's not included in here is the leases, uh, that is in operating expenses, but these are actual uh, purchases that are being planned in the next year um, for uh, operations. Are these uh, in addition to what we have or replacing uh, the, the John Deere? Uh, are we uh, required soon to change to an electric backhoe? I, I hear that popped up in a conversation and I just, uh, are we buying a backhoe that's going to be obsolete soon? The, the regulations right now that are pending are for at least for water agencies are small and medium. Um, it does not pertain to the purchases you see here, but we will continue to monitor that to make sure that whatever we buy is compliant with AQMD. But right now, uh, we haven't seen any particular regulations that dictate uh, the purchase of these particular items. And the backhoe's price is 156000 I thought they were more than that. That's why I was worried. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. One no. quick question. What do we do with the potable water truck? I thought we used ours for reclamation, watering, washing down the street, stuff like that. This, this particular item is actually being reviewed uh, right now. Uh, it might not move forward for that reason, but we're, uh, we're looking at it as we speak, basically. Is it for emergency? Think, well, yeah, that's one thing you would use it for, but I'm not, I'm not sure that we think we need to, we, we, don't, we don't know for sure if we want to bring that forward, but go on, Brian. No, Director Duncan, that portable water truck is exactly that, an emergency, which we had a, about a year and a half ago. We had an issue where we had to borrow one from DWA. They were, we were fortunate enough that they had one available. They brought theirs here and we were able to take water to an elevated tank that we could not get water to, to make sure that we maintain pressure in that area. So we put that in our budget and it was budgeted to go this year, but also included on our budget. And if we can scroll up, there's several different generators there. So what we were looking at is assessing the generators versus the motor savers and stuff like that. They're a much smaller ticket item and trying to basically postpone that because if the generators and the motor savers are going, it sort of it mitigates the issue that we had at our Northridge system that caused that issue. So we didn't purchase that immediately because we wanted to see what else we could accomplish and we're still assessing that. So, so that's a, it's an actual specific potable water. All the other water trucks that we have do something completely different. It's AQMD related water or air quality and things like that. Um, once we start uh, reconditioning the ponds and things like that, we put down water and stuff like that. So we have another truck that's for that. That specific purpose would be a potable water. And I know we can't rely 100% on this, but we did put... Director Duncan, your mic, please. A year ago, two years ago, we put in place a uh, equipment exchange, equipment loan borrowing trade policy with several local agencies. Um, I, I I would would hope that that would be one of the... We can still... Way, way down on the priority list for that kind of a... I believe the agreement you're talking about is our Cal Warren agreement, and you're absolutely yeah. right. That's what we used to borrow the DWA. Right. So, and that's what you just explained is exactly why we continue to review that particular item and on right. the way we operate our system to make sure that if this uh, is this necessary. And we don't ever want to say we wish we had, had something when we only use it once. Right. But if you don't have it that one time, you have a nightmare on your hands. And that's really why we're still oh, yeah. evaluating that, but it is a $178,000 item mm -hmm. that uh, basically purchases a small generator, a portable generator and a lot of motor savers. So we are still looking at that particular item, but that's a great point. I can't thing. wait. I think more than the to be honest with you. Yeah. One more idea on that, if you don't mind. Um, what, what's the life uh, expected lifespan? It seems like that would be an easy 25 year lifespan. I, I, how long do you keep trucks before you trade them in like that if they don't get used? I could see it sitting for 10 years without getting used. But like you say, when you need it, you need it. And I, I just wonder if it's something that if you amortize it out over its lifetime, that the actual cost would be negligible compared to the circumstances that would come about if we didn't have it and we needed it. I Again, that, that is a great point because the use of that may not be worth 
what we can do other places and other contingencies to make sure that we don't lose power to, to what I would consider critical lift stations or excuse me, pumps, booster stations. So yes, how many times would we use it? From what I understand when talking with staff, this is the only time that we've actually needed one in our system in, in recent memory. And by recent memory, some of our staff has been here 17 years, 20 years and things like that. So you're absolutely, both directors, thank you for your comments because uh, not only were we already looking at this item, uh, we will look at it with even a more focused eye, if you will, uh, moving forward. I, I'm, I, I lean more toward having it on hand than Director Duncan leads so, uh, on the other side of that. So whatever that's worth, I, I think it's something you should have. And, and you know, if it, but so. Well, you know, we, 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 I mean, the Cal Warren is a great point. And if we, I mean, we may have some equipment that other utilities don't, but they, you know, so we trade. And so all of us don't have to maybe have that hmm. same equipment. Well, I, I just think that, you know, I, I wonder how many of them uh, CVWD has. Um, we don't have one. There's a half, but are we close to a half million population? I would hope that we have more than one of those in the Valley. And uh, we'd be the last on the list to get one if we needed it and they needed it at the same time. And uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the response that we got from our Cal Warren alert was fantastic. I mean, DWA supported one. I don't know exactly who else responded to that other than them because once we found one, we stopped looking. But that is something that we, we will bring back to you for consideration before we purchase this item or before we take it off the CIP. You've seen it. We've commented on it. We hear you. And we'll look at it and we'll bring an answer to you or at least a a, a if we do decide not to purchase, we'll explain in detail why. Yeah, we'll bring it back to you before uh, we purchase. Those would have been good questions when the city approved over $3 million for one fire truck, right? <laughs> good point. <laughs> I also want to say thank you. You're pretty much bringing up all the items I wish we had more time to add review better. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> uh, that, that's uh, basically the items that we were talking before um, finishing the, the items here, so thank you. Uh, finally, uh, the, just the last uh, slides, which we basically already went through, um, are the cash review and those uh, graphs showing the cost versus cash on hand. Um, and at this point, um, I can answer any other questions you may have uh, from including, again, G Assistant General Manager Macy and General Manager Wallen. And thank you for your time. One question I had was, this includes the, um, the compensation study increases. Um, is that something that we could be provided just so we could see, you know, um, where those increases went? The, we can, yeah, we can uh, provide the detail for sure. Okay. The, the, the matrix, is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. yeah, well, now the matrix did not increase. The matrix stayed the same, but we moved people around inside the matrix in order to accomplish, you know, the the uh, the 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 goal of the compensation study, and just what we used to get, like the steps, and you know, step one. Yes, step yes. Stop. Vice President Wright, your mic, please. Oh, thank you. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the steps that, that tell us uh, what, what job description and what the steps are for uh, merit increases or whatever down the line. Sure. Yeah, and, to, and to be honest, uh, the operating expenses basically make up those numbers from the salaries and wages, the employee benefits and the fringe benefits uh, over last year in, included in, in the increase of 820000 is the 30000 for the um, um, certification pay, 600000 in the, um, the class and comp. That's exactly what went up, but I can provide the detail of what actually makes up the salaries. One makes up the employee benefits and the fringe benefits. Uh, the other two hundred thousand was with, for that new employee in the wastewater department, which we hope this year will be handled by the grant. 
Right. And when we do take the, bring the budget to you, there'll be three parts of three legislations or three things that you'll be asked to vote on. One will be the operating budget. The other will be the capital improvement program. And then the last one will be the class and comp, class and comp. or the, that matrix that you see every single year. It's just due to the sensitivity, the discussions we had in closed session. We didn't want to bring that out in public session until we got your buy-in in this particular item. Now we'll be sharing those results. As it we wanted you to see that it is workable within the budget process. Yeah. This is a good idea, you guys. It's very explanatory, I, th I think. Okay. Anyway. Any any other questions uh, concerning the 2022-2023 uh, budget? Ivan? Yeah, sorry. I have a couple more. Um, just looking at the operating expenses, there's a couple, like the biggest percentage jumps from this year to last year. I was wondering if you could just give a little more info. And that was the accounting, vehicle maintenance, and uh, customer accounts. Uh, yeah, the the main reason for that uh, the uh, are um, the operating assets that we have uh, for those departments to keep uh, business going. Uh, if you see in the middle of the of the page, fixed assets last year, um, they, it was not a significant increase, um, but it is two million dollars that we're spreading over each department to continue to do their business. Uh, part of it is also like the uh, meters. Um, as you remember this year, we had to come back and ask for more money for new meters. This year we budgeted 500,000, which is included in there. Um, and that's what makes up the, uh, let me go back to that screen so I can uh, see exactly what you're looking at. Yeah, I'm just looking at the third page that you. Oh, that's the comparison? Yeah, let yeah, me open that. It has actually. the percentages. So like accounting's up. Uh... 42%, vehicle maintenance, 35%, and customer accounts, almost 30%. Yeah, and the uh, part of that is also the salaries. That's uh, one of the main increases. The other one is the operating ex expenses that we uh, that we brought up earlier from, because again, here we have to put everything in context uh, from administration, the um, including the uh, electric utility. And one of the things I wanted to point out, thank you for bringing that up is, information technology uh, that we brought uh, uh, broke out from previous year being included in an in administration and this year being on its own, um, which shows also an increase over last year. We did revise the last year's numbers to include these changes so that it's comparable, um, just so that you wouldn't see zero for last year, for example, in information technology when we did have a budget, which is not coded as such. Um, but yeah, those are the primary increases over the last uh, year when looking at the operating expenses. Okay, thank you. Nancy, any uh, questions? Randy? No. Director Grusha, any uh, questions, additional questions or, or comments? Uh, I guess you'll make it till December, so I guess that's my job. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, with that, then we'll move on to item six, general manager's comments. Um, nothing, but I want to thank my staff. This budget process was, um, it, I'm, I'm going to start out with the good news and that it was exciting. Um, but with all of this work comes a lot of thought and foresight, and we do look into the future. Um, that concerns me all the time, um, daily all the time I'm thinking about it. And that's what, and Arturo did an excellent job this year putting this budget together. You notice that we presented it differently. We broke some of these things down. So we know, like it, it, it amazes me uh, how much we are uh, uh, spending on, uh, on IT work, our, our information technology, you know. Uh, but boy, if you, you all know that we had breakout sessions one after another on cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, that was, I mean, when we when we look at everything we need to do in all of our customer accounts, and then we put all these new meters in, and now we've got a um, uh, um, and, and a, a meter technology that the customers can use. Uh, they can go on the dashboard, see what they need. They have access. I mean, a lot of these improvements are are going to be. Uh, something that the customer is really going to appreciate and utilize to save money individually. With that, thank you very much for okay. all your guidance and leaders. We'll move on to director's comments. Uh, Director Sewell. No, thank you. Director Duncan. 
Yes, two things real quick. Um, Archer, I know this was your first full on budget for the district. This is more than enough detailed information for what I need. Um, I've seen these in the past come out with 12, 15, 20 pages. I don't want to know if you buy black pens or blue pens. You know, that's what you're for. Um, this is great. The way you have it laid out. I also appreciate that it's big enough I can see it. In the past, it's been oh, microscopic. Oh, my gosh. I remember that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then secondly, something Arturo said reminded me. Um, said we were back to normal operating functionally, you know, the way we always have been. But yet our lobby is still not open to the public. And that is something that was going to be looked at, going to be looked at, going to be looked at month after month after month. Get on it. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Yeah. Part of the part of the issue is, uh, even though we're we're back to normal with mm -hmm. a lot of things, the COVID still threatens us. We've we you know we we're exposed, and we do we are discussing how we can move people around internally up here so that we give them the distance that they need, and so we can open up that front lobby. Yes, I absolutely think we need precautions in place. Mask, gloves. You know, we got bulletproof glass up there. I don't care what precautions we take. And if you want to limit people in the lobby at a time, that's all fine and dandy. Okay. But we need to be accessible to the public. We are a government agency. I think that should we, be. We, we, do, we do let the public in. We, they can schedule a meeting. We'll visit with them anytime. And we have. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, we're, we're, in the, we're in the process of figuring out how we can do that. All right. Thank you. And that's all I have. Next Vice question, President. I'll just tag off of him. Uh, so what happens now if somebody comes to the door and they want to talk to somebody? Can they ring a bell or do they have to go call or what? You can go to the side door uh, if they need to. And sometimes they well, do. They, there's, there's, a no, there's a number for them to call. There, is there a number on the front for them yes. to call? Okay. I haven't, yes. I haven't been to the front lately. Well, we have had no one really complained much. Complaints on, on. And we have uh, put it out there on social media and everywhere we can that we are open by appointment. Anyone who needs to come into the district to do any business, uh, if they call us and make an appointment or even knock on the door, they're more than welcome to come in and, and do that business. And it's worked. Uh, so and, and they can make their payment. Yeah. They just need to leave it in the box. Well, I can't see that this room is small, no, no windows. I, I don't know. You know, it, it having public in here in this particular room, I'm not so sure oh, until yeah. this whole thing's over with, I would be. No, we're going to have the lights yeah. on here for that. Well, well, we'll attempt to see what we can do. We thank you for that input. Yes, Director Grasha, do you have any questions or comments? Oh, I think you got it all covered. Okay, all right. Uh, the only thing I'd like to add is that I'm really glad to see that we're in a really healthy position. Um, it's especially important with the projects that we have on the horizon and the fact that uh, Desert Hot Springs, one of our largest uh, uh, customer bases, is the fastest growing city in the Coachella Valley. And uh, I believe the Councilman Gardner told me they have over 800 building permits have been approved for future expansion. And um, so I'm, I'm glad to see that our, our budget and our planning and everything is going to meet future needs and my hats off to staff and everything for putting us together. It's really, out, really outstanding. Okay, anything else? Hey, Brian, do you have anything? Any comments? Okay. Uh, with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Okay.